good to be back fabricating things. It's been about two years since I have been in the Sterling Engine fabricating game. Um, I had a lot of fun when I did it. I was living in San Francisco at the time working at an engineering startup and it just it made sense then. Uh, since then I've moved. I've also picked up another job and I graduated with a master's degree which took a lot of time. So um, this is actually the very first video that I ever uploaded was a planar ortho spring which as you can see it goes up and down um, and then I pivoted to thermal acoustics because it really just made sense on the environment that I was in people that I was working with were very interested in acoustics and I had a lot of resources available so kind of leveraged that um, since then this original design has been haunting me so for some reason I decided to just jump back into it literally today. Um, I've been designing, redesigning the original model. Um, I never really got to finish it. It is a free piston Sterling engine using an ortho spring. So I want to show you what I have so far. And I'm excited to jump back into the fold of Sterling engine making. Looks like my glue a little old but we'll see if we can get it to work man that's a real stringy glue probably need to get a new order of that So one thing that I like to do is 3D model all of my things before I make them. Everything that you're seeing here, I'm going to take, give it a while for it to uh, dry. But I have all these items, right? So these are all several boxes full of materials. I obviously make and sell Sterling engines. Um, this represents the planter spring you just saw. This will be taken off, and then you'll see this is the heating chamber. That's the top. Um, but I want to make a Sterling engine that I can actually pressurize with helium and really go after the free piston Sterling engine model. Uh, it's really what made me interested in the process to begin with and I'm ready to try again. Okay. By the way, I'm filming with the Meta AI glasses. That's why it's like hands-on view. It also might look weird on YouTube. Um, but it does make it significantly easier to make videos. So we're sacrificing a little bit of things in order to do this. But um, if it's easier to make the videos, then I'm more likely to make them. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this. And if it's just terrible videos, you can let me know. But do you see how the displacer... Actually, I should probably just do this in pieces. So this is the displacer. Um, it is going to be a hollow aluminum right now. I'm considering a gyroid infill, um, but hollow aluminum, almost like a pop can, right? And then this is your six inch by, I think it's either 10 inches or a foot uh, long tube. It's that steel container over there. So the planar spring, which I already showed you, this is a little miniature version of it, will allow the displacer with one millimeter of space on all sides to move up and down vertically. It has an inch or two inches of give on both both directions. So in order for it to allow for it to go up and down, there has to be the appropriate amount of space on this side as well. See how that comes out? So you gotta put a collar on here. I might go collar, I might go hemisphere. I'm not really sure yet. Um, I'm reprinting this right now because the print came out bad and I'm a stickler for details, but uh, that goes on there. This is your pressurization port. And then this is just the plunger, uh, otherwise the piston. So that's how it's going to work, right? So you'll heat the bottom. Air, hot air will go up here. It'll cool, create the Sterling cycle. 
the planner spring will allow the displacer to move freely, which really, for the sake of engineering and just complexity, it's easier to use the spring than it is to use like a linkage or something like that, uh, at least for me. There are people out there that can do it better than me. Um, I'm a big fan of making something that you don't have to mess with once you've made it, right? The goal would be just to make this thing and it works. That's it. You don't have to do anything else to it. The other part of this is uh, I'm not going to go the route that I have gone before and many others have gone as well with Sterling engines and that's applying either a spring or weight at the top of the plunger. Um, I just got a phone call and I lost my train of thought, but most Sterling engines and if you look back on the ones that I have made before, they all require a weight on top of the piston. I'm not going to use a weight. Um, I've been doing a lot of research, obviously from my own experiments over the past two years, and the actual answer here is a gas spring. That's what you need to do. It's not weight. Adding weight will only affect the um, performance of your engine. So this one obviously uses like a wheel and a mechanism, and I might go that route. It looks a little overcomplicated for me. Uh, a lot of things that can break, and I'm not a fan of things breaking. But what I'm going to do is it's going to be the piston itself will be the magnet. The coil will be wrapped around the cylinder, and the top of the cylinder will be pressurized to 5 to 20 of helium. Um, and that will act the same way as a spring, but as the piston goes up to compress the gas above it, it'll be rejected and forced back down using the gas spring. So what you really have is a gas spring down here and a gas spring up there um, in a fully hermetically sealed container. The reason that you want to use helium is because it has a higher molecular count, which means that it'll heat up and cool down faster, uh, which, I mean, if you know about Sterling engines, then that's really what you want, right? You want the most efficient thermodynamic cycle. So, uh, very excited to get back into it. Very excited to make this. Uh, it should be pretty simple, I think. Uh, really, I mean, the fabrication process, I'm obviously using real steel and things like that, so it's going to take time to make this, but um, this is kind of like my big fish, right? This is what I started, never finished. Um, the last one that I made, I made to put inside of a campfire. I've since become a much more uh, seasoned camper, and the reality is that you can't always have a campfire. So that kind of defeated my purpose. Um, and so what I do now is I have a propane tank and a propane torch because it's fire to category two compliant So for this one, I wanted a sterling engine that I could put on a burner On either a butane or a propane burner and generate electricity from there because you always have that um, So this one will sit vertically only you can sit it horizontal, but then you have horizontal loading from the ortho spring as you can see here, it still works, but it's not going to work as well as it would with this. Also, the reason you want it vertical is because the gravity will actually assist the spring in the thermodynamic cycle, and so you'll have a much more efficient engine as well. So, uh, looks like not a lot of thought went into this. I promise you it did. Seems pretty simple, but that is a Sterling engine in creation. To go through my design process, it's nothing fancy. It's quite literally Tinkercad. Um, and iteration, right? So each piece individually, this is your planner spring, this is the plunger, this is an unleveled, there you go, there's a displacer, this is the cap, this is where you're going to pressurize with helium. I likely need to add another one where I can get the air out and the air in, right? So pushing out air and pushing in helium. This is the collar. I'll probably end up using a hemisphere, uh, but we'll see. This is your displacer. And then this is your container. And if you want to see a cut view, this is what it looks like from the side. So your plunger, this is just so I can grab it. This will be taken off, the top will be sealed, as I mentioned earlier. We'll have a coil around this. I'm um, trying to figure out if I want to use a water jacket or if I want to use copper coil. I'll probably use copper coil. I did the water jackets before. The problem with the water jackets is um, really just manufacturing. They don't always come out sealed and then you have leaks and it's quite expensive. And the more expensive this is, the more price inhibitive it is. I'm not 
sponsored or anything like that. Like I see people that have sponsored videos. Um, I just do this because I like to do this and this keeps me engaged. Um, so cheaper is better but also high quality materials are important to me. So kind of in this weird mix where I refuse to make one out of a soda can um, but I also don't want to spend a ton of money. So um, again not sponsored but just the displacer is going to be about 130 if PC Buway will accept my design. If not, I've considered going the ceramic route. Uh, the problem with the ceramic is it'll be heavier, and it'll be brittle, and it's significantly more expensive, probably in, in the realm of like 500. So, very excited to get back into it. Um, and I will keep you all updated as we build this next Sterling engine. Thanks.